the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, who by a star led wise men to the worship of your Son, guide by your light the nations of the earth, that the whole world may know your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Listen for the leading of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There are all sorts of themes that go hand in hand with Epiphany. Revelation, dawning light, the offering of gifts, 
God's loving inclusion of all people, all good quality themes. And they've each appealed to me in different ways in previous years. This year, however, I started to think about something that I've never thought of before, at least not with any depth. The Gospel for Epiphany tells the story of the wise men seeking Jesus, and in reading it again, I thought about what it must have taken them to get to Jesus. I don't think it's the journey that we all imagine. We tell the story of the visiting Magi 12 days after we celebrate Jesus' birth, and all of our popular nativity scenes seem to have the three wise men situated among Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the angels, shepherds, and a variety of barn animals. But it's more likely that the journey of the wise men took months, if not years. No one's really sure how long it took, but it wasn't a short camel ride over from a neighboring kingdom. T.S. Eliot wrote a poem called The Journey of the Magi, in which he imagined one of those wise men reflecting in later years on that journey. And in the poem, he talked about grumbling men, tired and cursing when they stopped at night. He talked about passing through hostile cities and unfriendly towns, and about villages that overcharged their caravan for the necessities they needed, and what a hard time they had of it all. All the while, a voice was ringing in their ears that this was folly, and they never should have left home. And when they finally arrived at the place the star had guided them, they couldn't quite figure out if they'd been led that way for a birth or a death. There was evidence of a birth, but it also felt like kind of a death. When they returned home, they realized that nothing was the same, and the old things that they used to enjoy were now unfamiliar to them. They had experienced an epiphany, and now nothing else could satisfy them but a new life, following the God they'd encountered on their long journey. And the poem ends with the words, I should be glad of another death. This imagining of the journey of the Magi really resonates with me this year. Journeys are very seldom made where everything goes right and plans are carried off without a hitch and everybody along the way cooperates and treats you fairly. Journeys can be hard, especially long ones, and they often change us in ways that we never anticipated. This whole past year has been a journey, a very long one and a hard one, a journey with unexpected detours and distractions and frustrations and hardships. We've lost people on this journey. We've uncovered and discovered things on this journey, and we have been irrevocably changed by it. I wonder if we would have done anything differently last March if we'd known what the next 10 months would bring, if we knew the cost of all of our decisions. Would we lock our doors and mute the news? Would we be more proactive in supporting policies we think might have made a difference? Would we have stood up sooner for the vulnerable, or would we have hardened our hearts? Would we have given more generously or kept our resources to ourselves? Would we have succumbed to the voices telling us that all our efforts for change and for the good of others were folly? I don't know the answers to those questions. In many ways, it feels like a blessing that we don't know the exact routes we'll take or the obstacles we'll encounter when we first step out in faith to live and love in this world, to set off in search of Jesus in our midst, and for the next place that we're called to bring our own particular gifts. This year, as we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, the revelation of God to the world, the light dawning after a long darkness, the offering of all our gifts, I hope that we'll take time to reflect on how we got here and notice that even when things were hard, the road rough and the way unclear, that we have never been truly alone. God has been with us, guiding us through it all, leading us where we need to go. We've been changed, not just as individuals or the church, the whole world has changed. We can't go back to the way things were, 
nor do I think we should. We've died to some old ways that needed to die, and we've been reborn in new and hopeful ways. I believe, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's very painful, that we are called to move forward, to press on, knowing that we are met by the incarnate God. And as we go through the cycles of birth and death, that with God there is always life offered and shared. I'd like to leave you with the words of my favorite poet, Jan Richardson. This is her epiphany blessing. If you could see the journey whole, you might never undertake it, might never dare the first step that propels you from the place you have known toward the place you know not. Call it one of the mercies of the road, that we see it only by stages as it opens before us, as it comes into our keeping, step by single step. There is nothing for it but to go, and by our going, take the vows the pilgrim takes, to be faithful to the next step, to rely on more than the map, to heed the signposts of intuition and dream, to follow the star that only you will recognize, to keep an open eye for the wonders that attend the path, to press on beyond distractions, beyond fatigue, beyond what would tempt you from the way. There are vows that only you will know, the secret promises for your particular path, and the new ones that you will need to make when the road is revealed by turns that you could not have foreseen. Keep them, break them, make them again. Each promise becomes part of the path. Each choice creates the road that will take you to the place where at last you will kneel to offer the gift most needed, the gift that only you can give before turning to go home by another way. Amen. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a moment to reflect and prepare to let God into your heart. God of wonder, as we look forward with optimism to the new year ahead, let us first reflect on the year that has passed. While it was a year unlike any other for most of us, and some people struggled significantly because of the COVID-19 restrictions, there were many positive outcomes. It made us realize what is important in life and what can be postponed until later. It made us value the beauty of some of the most spectacular sunrises and sunsets we have ever seen. It made us value what we had in life in general. It made us realize that humanity has a vast ability to be creative when it is found to be necessary. From the finding of not one, but many potential vaccines to protect us from the virus, to people finding ways to meet safely in groups using computer programs, to selfless individuals going out of their way to reach out to others who needed financial, social, or health care help. It was indeed a year of change and wonder. It was a year that brought out the best in most people, although it did bring out the worst in others. It also made people, us aware people can thrive when wages are fair, and that this is also reflected in the economy. It brought to light that groups of people are inequitably affected by illness and poverty, and that this affects all of us. It showed us to be grateful for our public health, health care, and education. It showed us that together, working for the common good can result in a better society that values the health and welfare of all. God, for all these gifts, we give thanks. Globally, we pray for all those in every part of the world who are adversely affected by COVID-19 and other communicable diseases and who have the added problems of pot political unrest natural disasters, famine, or wars. We pray for fair and equitable distribution of resources and vaccines to those countries un unable to pay for them because of poverty. Locally, we pray for all those who are suffering because of COVID-19, those who are lonely and forgotten, those who are ill, or, or who has had a family member who has been ill or died, those who have lost their jobs or have mental health issues that have been exacerbated by the pandemic. We also pray for the many young people who are going back to school after the Christmas break, that they will be refreshed and healthy. We also acknowledge our indebtedness to the first Indigenous people for the land we are on, particularly our closest neighbours, the Chippewas of Georgina Island First Nation. I now invite anyone who wishes to share those they hold in need of prayer aloud or in the silence of their hearts. We hold in prayer the families and loved ones of all who have recently died. This week, we remember Roth Smith, husband of Lorraine Smith. 
Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light per perpetual shine upon them. God, as we reflect our recent celebration of the birth of Jesus, let us consider his message of love, love to us, written in the words of Peter Meyer. In Bethlehem, a manger waits, long ago and so today, where hatred-weary people pray, love will come and lay there. And so do countless stables stand in hearts as harsh as desert lands, rough shelters in the wind and sand that love may come and stay there. Love that opens fists of hate, heaps of gold on beggars' plates, love that shows a kindly face to enemies and strangers. And the walls of stables tremble so when the winds of fear and judgment blow, for a stable hopes in love alone and know that love's the answer. O oh, love, the prophet's only word, the only lesson left to learn, the only end of heaven's work, and the only road that goes there. Love that sees with mercy's eyes, holds its arms out open wide, threads its loom with separate lives, and weaves them all together. So may the lamps of stables glow brightly that their light may go for miles in the darkness, so love will find its way there. May the love of Christ shine in all of us. In Christ's name, amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You have revealed the eternal plan of salvation and have shown your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the light of all people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, we raise our voices in joyful praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you have sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this in memory of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, and with whom, and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O Father Almighty, world without end. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God, here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. Behold who you are, become what you receive, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God, O Lamb of God that taketh away.
Let us pray. God of all the nations of the earth, guide. guide us with your light. Help us to recognize Christ as he comes to us in this Eucharist and in our neighbors. May we welcome him with love, for he is Lord now and forever. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.